Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Let's Play series here on the channel. So to start us off today, I have a little question for you. What is, in your opinion, the grindiest farm to make in Minecraft? Well, a lot of you actually answered that it was the Guardian farm. And if that was your guess just now, then you are absolutely right. And that is what we're building today. But before we get started here, I just want to take a second and show you how incredibly grindy it was to get this started. <laughs> so first, I had to kill a bunch of Elder Guardians, which by the way, really annoying. And then I had to collect their sponges, make a huge perimeter around the farm. Once I did that, obviously I had to drain the farm, which brought on some really interesting uh, glitches <laughs> over and over which was really fun. And then I had to tear down the entire ocean monument, which was really annoying because it filled up with guardians <laughs> and took absolutely forever to clear out because I kept taking so much damage. I had to run away and hide. And now we are here. I always wanted to drain one of these and make a base like this around the guardian farm. And this week I had some extra time and I said, you know what, let's get it done. So, so far, I have basically just covered like everything here in grass um, just to kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like later. But we will put some trees and some other custom stuff in here later on. Don't worry. I also started building the base of the Guardian Farm Temple here. I'm kind of going for a new theme that I haven't really done before. This kind of like fantasy, um, maybe a bit Greek inspired with the arches and stuff and I really like it so far. But you can see in there, I actually started building a guardian farm, and before you ask, no, I did not watch a tutorial. That being said though, if anybody has any ideas on how to make this farm better at the end of the video, please let me know, because I want a lot of these blocks. <laughs> so I actually, yeah, collected a lot of them from deleting the temple, but I've kind of started using them a lot again, and I don't know how many will be left at the end of this build. But uh, I wanted to show you guys what I have done so far, which obviously is not much, but it is a start in the right direction, I think. Um, so the base of the temple is completely done. And now I'm just working on the top part, which will actually be where the base is going to be located and where the farm and all that is going to be. And I've been really inspired by uh, Greek architecture recently. Um, I did used to study it, like I said, but I, I recently had like a revival in, <laughs> in that sort of stuff. So I'm having a lot of fun trying to design this like it was the lost city of Atlantis, but kind of Greek. And it's been really fun, but really challenging so far because it's not really a type of style that I work with often in Minecraft. Like, I'm pretty good at medieval and I'm, I'm pretty good at like just a, my own style, but I'm really trying to expand and do different things so that the world doesn't get too stale and that each area can have its own sort of vibe and style. Uh, that being said though, yeah, it's been pretty tricky. And also what I've been doing, and some of you might be really proud of me here, I'm actually building with even numbers. I think it's one of the first times I've ever done that before where everything is going to be even, or at least, I mean, almost everything. Some stuff is still odd, but uh, I'm really trying here to switch it up and do something new and different. And so far, it's not as awful as I thought it would be. The little bit of outlining that I've done so far has actually taken a lot longer than I thought it would. And that is primarily because I had no idea I'd have this hard a time um, connecting the pieces. <laughs> I had an idea in my head, but the blocks just like weren't lining up, if that makes sense. But uh, now I have quite a bit better idea. That's not a good sentence. I have a better idea now of what I'm doing and how it's all going to look. So I thought that I would share it with you. Um, I do like it with shaders more, <laughs> so I'll have to work on that. But uh, this is it without shaders. Um, it's starting to look temple-y and really big but obviously we still have a little ways to go before we're done so i started setting up these kind of rooms here on the side which i think look freaking awesome <laughs> but now i need to sort of connect them to the sphere which is where i'm kind of running into an issue so 
obviously we want the sphere or like dome to pop out from the top right that's obvious like as a silhouette it's gonna kind of look like the white house it's gonna be cool but the problem i'm running into is down here what the heck do we do because now this room has kind of a weird um block in it right and it kind of ruins the utility of this room so what i did on this side i'm gonna try both and i'm gonna pick which one i like better and man it sounds like wet feet down here because of all of these guys <laughs> i need to finish the farm um over here what i've done is i've actually set up pillars and i plan to chop away uh this here to see if maybe that looks better and then actually just continue that like on top of the roof is the idea but again i'm really sort of struggling here having a hard time figuring it out but overall i'm really liking the direction and keep in mind guys like this is only um the second phase right this is just outlining and trying to figure out how the whole thing is going to look and once we have that idea it's going to be a lot easier to actually complete this place and once obviously that we decorate it outside a little bit more it's going to look a lot better. Oh man, I am actually really starting to like what is going on with this build. I'm not going to lie, like I, I was having a really hard time for a really long time and I really had no idea what I was doing and I was really worried that this build wouldn't turn out super good because it is so far outside of my comfort zone. So let me turn off shaders here and I'll give you guys a little flyby. Um, I've actually been changing out a lot of the blocks, like the roof and stuff changed and the floor here is going to change. Uh, that is a given, but I'm just like not there yet. That's probably one of the later things we're going to be doing. But I have designed the side, what these are going to look like here for the most part. And the final design for the roof is here. I will translate it to this one later. Uh, since the last clip, I've also made a ginormous uh glass dome shout out to plots.org or whatever it is <laughs> uh to help me helping me make this uh really cool website i'll link it in the description if you're looking for somewhere to make uh domes like this um the idea is basically it was like still following that roman uh basilica theme kind of they had these sometimes <laughs> and now I am stuck on the next section, which is how the heck are we going to incorporate all these interiors together? Because it is actually kind of a challenge to make like this section here look good and that section over there look good and etc. and kind of make them flow together on the inside here. Um, I did definitely design this with the exterior in mind first. So it's kind of a challenge to make the inside look good and also make the inside usable. That's another challenge because if the inside is not usable, then we're going to have a really hard time like making the farm work and stuff. So I'm, I'm sort of just fiddle farting around here, um, breaking blocks, putting blocks back and just trying to figure out how the blocking is going to be which is probably the biggest challenge I'm having so far. And I have detailed like a little bit to kind of just try and get some ideas. But again, I'm not entirely satisfied yet, but we're getting there. So I've actually spent the better part of the whole day um, trying to figure out what exactly it is I want to have like in each area. So that way it'll be a little bit easier to decide how things will line up eventually, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I landed on um, little doorways like this. I think this is the solution. And I know earlier I said I didn't really like that outcropping here. But I had a bigger reflection, and I think that like this space here is going to be the main space. So it makes sense that uh, this area here is kind of just like an access point. And we're going to actually have to find a spot for some stairs back here because I want to be able to actually access the basement, which right now there's no way over there. <laughs> so that's step two. Um, I've been sort of stuck, though, trying to figure out if I turn on my shaders here trying to figure out what exactly the blocks here are going to be and how we're going to make it not look like a super plain mess because I do really like the prismarine bricks. I think they're one of the nicest blocks in the game along with the prismarine block, but I think that too much of it kind of looks like crap. So I'm trying to work through that now. And doesn't this thing kind of look like plankton from SpongeBob? <laughs> Big old proto plankton. Uh, I thought that was really funny. <laughs> so 
I think to break it up, we're going to use some bushes, definitely. Maybe some calcite. I think that's what it's called. Uh, calcite, yes. A little bit of calcite and maybe some different sort of green variants or gray variants will help to break it up and make it look better. But for now, it's kind of plain. Uh, and I'm also going to try using some like half blocks and stuff to try to make it look a little bit more interesting visually. But uh, so far, I am really, really happy with it. I think it's turning out really, really cool. However, something a little less cool that happened at the same time is that around this part of the build, I completely ran out of Dark Prismarine. And I think it is one of the blocks we should be using a lot more in this build to give a detail and the color that it needs. So I needed to complete the Guardian Farm, which was an absolute pain in the b I have never sweated so hard to place blocks. Because <laughs> first, I had to fill the whole thing with kelp to make source blocks. And then I had to delete the sand under the kelp and put some soul sand on the bottom of that, which was a pain in the butt to do because I kept running out of air and I'm an idiot who only made the three minute potions for invisibility, which led to me being zapped quite a few times and dying <laughs> within the chamber. So slowly but surely here, I have completed this farm and it is now pretty much ready to start burning these guys up. Um, I filled out the water and I made sure that it's all flowing into the center and everything, etc., etc. But I do now wish that I watched a tutorial on how to make this because it probably would have been a lot easier than the way that I did it. It was a big headache, but that's how I like to play Minecraft. It's a lot more fun to do it yourself, I think. And like, if you really need help and you really don't know what to do, then a tutorial, maybe just watch it quickly. So that way you can kind of understand the mechanics behind whatever you're making. But honestly, it's a lot more fun to just mess around and figure it out, though it does easily waste uh, a whole afternoon at this point. I think I've been working on this video for just about two weeks now. And so if you haven't liked or subscribed yet and you're still watching and you enjoyed it, if you could consider that, that would help me out a buttload. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm invisible. You can't see me. But uh, yeah, it is Definitely a grind, and now we are actually on the last phase here. Once I break all these blocks, the guardians will float to the top, and they will fall right into the chamber of death, which hasn't been created yet, but now it'll be a lot easier to kind of corral these guys into uh, where I want them to go. The main idea is they're basically just going to fall down, and then once they fall down, they will die. <laughs> that, is the, that is the goal. Uh, I'm not looking for XP here. I already have an XP farm that works very, very well. Thank you very much. And I'm just looking for their drops. Um, and honestly, like I'm probably going to be building here a lot. So looting isn't that big of a concern for me or anything. Oh, didn't close that actually. Uh, looting and all that doesn't really help me out much here. I can't make it out of here, can I? Oh, jeez. So yeah, I didn't really think about where this farm would be in the grand scheme of things. And looking back, I really do wish that I had made it in the uh, center of the sphere. <laughs> like that would have been so much better if they all landed right here. But instead, like a moron, I made it over here. Uh, but that's OK. It's not that big a deal. It would have been cool to maybe be able to see it like working from above here. But ultimately, I don't think it's that big of a deal. And I don't think that I'm going to take the time to remake this because this was an absolute grind. Honestly, making this probably took longer than making the entire uh, place so far around it. <laughs> so anyways, now we can actually work on the collection system, which I will complete near the end of the video. But I just need to get a chest and a way to kill them so that I can start getting their blocks. And and just like that, I have set up a little death chamber here. If I go into free cam, you'll see they fall down and bloop through the lava and into these hoppers. Now, I do have an issue where they're getting caught over here, which kind of sucks and hinders the spawn rates a little bit. Uh, I don't really have any ideas on how to fix that just yet, but I think what I might do is actually replace all of these blocks here all the stone brick with fence gate and extend the kill chamber by one block all around. Maybe that'll fix it. But uh, if you guys have any ideas on what to do there, I would greatly appreciate it. <laughs> so anyways, now they fall, they die right here into this hopper. And it's already gotten me quite a bit, which is nice. Oh, 
and some more. Awesome. Yeah, it is working. Uh, just not peak efficiency just yet, but that's okay. So the idea is they're going to go choop, 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 this way, right? And then if you're following here, I'm going to shoot them up somewhere around here. And then eventually through the floor, we will have an automatic item collection system probably against this wall here. All right, well, it is kind of a upsetting moment here in the development of this episode. Uh, I have just died and lost probably half of my stuff, <laughs> which um, honestly, I like that hasn't happened in over two years. Um, I don't really know what to do at this point. <laughs> I've kind of taken a little break here from the game for a day because I, I was really upset by this. Uh, basically, what happened is I fell into this hole and there was like cobble because water fell in. And then what happened is I uh, ran into the lava over here. I dug into it and just died instantly. Um, luckily, most of my stuff is netherite, though I did lose a sharpness sword, uh, like a fully enchanted and sharpness sword, uh, a bunch of dark prismarine blocks, uh, a bunch of lily pads, like basically stuff that I could have really gone without losing, honestly. <laughs> but on the upside, uh, I have been starting to work on a path here. So the idea is like you're going to come up and it's going to be water. I think we need to incorporate more water to this place. I think as a floor color, it would be really cool. And I like this uh, pattern that I'm doing here. And I will probably honestly make it a little bit better uh, as time goes on. This is just like the rough draft. If I turn off shaders here. This is just the, uh, the rough draft. But I want to start getting a bigger chunk of this place completed. That way we can actually set up the chests and everything. But I'm kind of starved on these blocks for now because I died. <laughs> and now I need to wait for more guardians to fall down into my pit here. Uh, so I will work on maybe completing some other sections of the base. Um, maybe like this side and the inner room start to develop that a little bit more maybe even make some statues that look decent and not this weird thing maybe something a little bit like this <laughs> so i've been busy at work here adding some little details here and there and i came up with this little fish statue um my friend mentioned that maybe i should do something like a crescent fish and i think that's a really good idea i think it looks really cool and the orange wool uh, we're going to add more of it, but that's going to be kind of like a uh, homage to the guardians of the temple. So let me show you guys what I've been working on here, because there is actually quite a bit. Um, for one, I don't think anybody understands how absolutely devastatingly long it takes to put glass here. Um, I kind of wish I had done that the first time around and not just done like a sand perimeter because it's basically double the work, <laughs> but it's looking awesome. Like, look what happens when I go through here. Oh, isn't that freaking cool? Now, unfortunately, the shaders kind of kills it a little bit, but maybe I can find a different shaders or tweak my settings so that it looks good with shaders because I do like uh, looking out into the ocean. I think that is so cool. Speaking of cool, I'm going to need all of your help uh, for this next part of the video. <laughs> so I am really stuck on what pillar design I like the most. And I think that it's going to be really hard to choose. So I figured, you know what? I think you guys honestly, usually, uh, you know best. So I would ask everybody. So if you have feedback, please leave it in the comments. So here are basically the three designs that I've come up with. Uh, maybe if I fly here, it'll be a bit easier to see them. So we have this one here. It's more of like a Corinthian pillar. So it kind of goes in and out and it's really decorated on top. This one's a little bit more ionic, I guess. Um, it's, it's a little bit more straightforward. Or is it Doric? I forget. Anyway, some art history major is going to get mad at me. Uh, I, <laughs> I built this one. I'm not too sure about this one, to be honest. It's probably my least favorite. And the simplest but kind of most efficient of them all is this one here. Because keep in mind, we are going to weather and texture this place up next. So I think this one might fit the best overall. But ultimately, it's going to be in the hands of you the fine viewers of this video to uh, decide which one is best. So let's say this is number one, this is number two, and this is number three. Let me know in the comments down below. But for now, we're going to be making these ones because they're probably the simplest out of them all. And I can just like crank them out on mass really quick here. And so we get a better idea of the finished product. 
Uh, while I'm doing this, though, I thought it might be fun to kind of explain my thought when I make things like this, because I've had a lot of comments asking me to talk about how I do my detailing. And I thought it was a really interesting topic. Uh, it's not very complicated, and I'm definitely not an expert. If you want an expert, you can go watch like B00 or something. He's the king of this. <laughs> but basically, what I try to do is I try to keep it in chunks. Uh, I think it looks a lot better when you do that. So basically, this is like A, and this is B. And you always try to make sure that they intermingle. But while they intermingle, you don't lose the sense of structural stability. And you don't lose the sense that these pieces fit together, right? So that might sound a little bit backwards. But basically, what I'm trying to say is that, let's say there's a few of these blocks together. That's a good thing. You don't want to break them up because if you break them up too much, then it won't look like it's actually uh, like a structure. It's just going to look like a mess of blocks on the wall. So here's what basically what I do. I try to keep it in like chunks of three for something like this, especially the small like chunks of three or four so that it's always together um, and there's always pieces that connect. See, they're always like it's always congruent. And here there's actually like you could break this one and I could put one here. And that would look good because that one actually mixes with these and makes three. And then on here it makes two. Diagonal is okay, but to be avoided, I think, on a size like this. Anyway, I hope that helps you a little bit at least. <laughs> uh, I'm sure there's some better tutorials out there, but that's kind of just how I go through it generally. Whoa, hey, you're losing me. Uh, yeah, that's how I get through it generally. Uh, that being said, though, that is actually the last pillar I did before I moved on and started doing some other stuff, which you can probably notice here. Um, I had a bit of a change of heart with this build, and I think it's for the better. So I was having a really hard time figuring out what I wanted to do in here and how to make it look like Atlantis slash uh, like mythical fantasy Atlantis, whatever. And then I remembered, you know, something that's really fun about this game is decorating your base. But I think making it look like a base kind of keeps it whimsical and fun which is something that I did want for this place. And I think I was just taking it too seriously. And so I decided to go with this more fun kind of pixel art, uh, interesting area. So I put a big sun in the floor here. And if I fly up, uh, we can look at it. But yeah, there's a big sun in the floor and there's a guardian up here. And then the drops will go here. So now it's just a nice fun area that we can enjoy. And like just it's whimsical a little bit, I hope <laughs> it's a bit different than what I usually do. But uh, I really like it. And out here, I put a few flowers. This is my favorite flower in the game now, even though it's absolutely useless. Uh, I also added a bunch of trees and more glass. So it's almost done at this point, everybody. I am really excited. Um, I did do some pillars, but I still need to do like a lot of the kind of finer detail. You can see like back here, none of this is done. And neither is down here. <laughs> but uh, I do kind of have a reason for that. I thought since we're kind of making a new home in here and we're going to be probably spending a lot of time here in the future building farms and developing the area so that we can really get some infrastructure going out here. Uh, I thought it would be really fun to sort of ask you guys what I should make and what farms I should be putting here. I think the next step is probably going to be like a Wither Rose farm it would probably be really good so that I can just get basically automatic uh, Dark Prismarine. But of course, there are a bunch of other options, and I thought it would be really cool to build it together uh, in a way, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like, I thought it would be awesome if uh, we could, like, sort of crowdsource the building of this area. And so that is why I have left some spaces blank, like down here. I think it'll be a lot more fun that way and a lot more interactive for everybody. And to be honest, sometimes for me, I do sort of run out of ideas. And I think it is really fun to to read the comments and sort of build off of what you guys write. And I, I really appreciate that. That's like my favorite part of uh, doing YouTube videos is it's really brought back some of that love from Minecraft that I was kind of missing before I started doing this. So now I'm just adding some plants and working on some little details in here. I'm going to be honest, though, I, I'm kind of running out of steam on like what to do up here. And I don't want to just build something to finish the video. I want it to be something that I'll actually enjoy and not want to tear down. <laughs> so how about uh, we turn on the shaders here and we go for a final little float around and just take a look at what we've accomplished this week. This has definitely been, oh, and I'll do that before the end of the video. 
and this has been probably the grindiest episode that I have ever done. I'm really happy with it so far, and I can't wait to hear from you guys on what I should do next. So thank you so much for watching. If you stuck around to the end, I really appreciate it. And of course, if you liked the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. I will catch you guys next week with a whole other project. Until then, bye bye